So the second way to reprogram your mind is to change your speech pattern. Who's heard of neuro-linguistic programming? Is it really, no? NLP, Tony Robbins, very popular idea. Um, the concept is that when you change what you say, it actually subconsciously programs your mind. And your mind doesn't know the difference because it just processes whatever you feed into it, just like a computer. Garbage in, garbage out. Okay, so if you program your mind with positive speech, then you're naturally subconsciously programmed to be more positive. That's the concept, okay? So what I say is that I can tell, or you can tell how successful someone is by just how they talk and their vocabulary. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever really listened to what people say? Have you ever eavesdropped on a conversation? And you can tell that person is probably not very successful, or this person, oh, he's going somewhere, or she's going somewhere, or this person is actually it is toxic. You don't want to hang around them just by what they're saying, the words that they use, right? So this is that concept. And uh, here's a live demo, okay? So who wants to do this? All right, who, who's seen uh, the Kung Fu movie? Kung Fu, right? It says, snatch the pedal from my hand, grasshopper. Okay, this is a reflex drill, okay? So I have a, I don't have a pebble, I have this chopstick. You want me so, to snatch it for you? Hold on a sec. So I want you to try to snatch this chopstick from my hand. Right now? Yeah. You didn't try, you snatched it. I want you to try to snatch it. Without actually snatching it? I, no, I just want you to try to snatch it. No, you didn't try, you just snatched it. That, that makes no sense. How do I just try to? I want you to try to snatch it. <laughs> no, you just didn't snatch it. That's what, you just didn't snatch it. You didn't, okay. But, but, did you just snatch it. it, you didn't try. Are you confused? Yes. <laughs> okay, yes, I'll see that. I'll explain. Try versus attempting. Trying is a pre-failure word. Because you can't try to do something. You can either do it or you don't do it. I just showed you. You can't try it. Either you snatched it or you didn't snatch it. Okay, so when people say try, it's actually a pre-failure word because there's no such thing as try. Try doesn't exist. Okay, now what's a better word to use? Attempt. So I want you to attempt to snatch it. Okay, was the attempt successful? Did he snatch it? Yes. Good job. <laughs> okay. So attempt is a pre-success word, whereas try is a pre-failure word. You know, a lot of people use the word try, and a lot of people don't re recognize this. So when a lot of people use the word try, is actually subconscious. It's kind of like a pre-failure pre programming. When, when you just simply change that to attempt, now in your mind, When you just simply change that to attempt, now in your mind, you're able to attempt, either the attempt was successful or attempt it was unsuccessful. Does it make sense? Okay. So there's three, actually three words that keep you stuck. Try is one of them. The other one is why. And the third one is can't. Try is a pre-failure word. Do or do not, there's no try. Yoda is, Yoda is way ahead of everybody. How about why? Second question. Let me ask you this. Does why load information first, or does it load emotion first? When you ask why. Okay. I think, I think emotion first. Like you're, when you ask why, you're like already trying to reject something. Okay. Okay, well, let's compare it to the, all the other questions. What? Is that emotion first or information first? Information first. When? Is that information first or emotion first? Information. Um, where? Is that information or emo uh, emotion? First. Information. information. Okay. Compared to those ones, why? Is it more information or more emotion first? You still think information? Okay. So it's actually, for most people, it's emotion first. 
because y is not, is not hard data that you can get. Okay? So whereas where, when, what is hard data, right? You can specifically figure out what that is. But then y is like, there's no hard data you can grasp onto, so your mind actually goes emotional first before it goes to information. Yeah. So how about this? There's a second question. Is why, is that based in the present, past, or future when you ask that question? Where does your mind go? Does it go past, present, or future? It goes to the past. We, we covered this in the last session, is that where is the best time to be? Present. In the present, right? Can you change the past? You can't, but we can learn from the past. So what Y does is actually makes you emotional and puts you into, into the past where you can't change anything. Okay, so if you ask why a lot, what happens is it just keeps you stuck. It goes in the loop that you can never get out because you never change it, and it keeps you emotional and it keeps you from thinking in terms of information rather than emotion. There's a third one, can't. And this is pretty obvious, I think, is it imposes psychological limits that may not exist in reality. So many people say, I can't do that, or that can't happen, or uh, I can't believe that's happen happening. If you use a lot of can't, you can tell that they have a lot of self-imposed limiting beliefs inside their mind. Okay, so those three words that keep you, keep you stuck. Now, you might be asking, okay, what are some words that are opposite? If there are negative words, what are some positive words? So here's three positive words that get you unstuck and help you to keep moving forward. And these three words are might, specifically, and now. So let me ask you, what do you think makes these three words so powerful? Now. now. Why is that powerful? Because now you're taking action. Now you're taking action. Right. Now, because you can take action in the present. OK? How about the other ones? Right. Specifically because you can, you have a goal, right? You have uh, something that you can, you can do, something achievable. Okay, good. And then how about might? I think might just opens up more opportunities. Opportunity. Okay. So here's the answers. So might has built into it possibility. It also is a uh, synonym of strength, right? Might, as in might. And also has creativity built into it. So your mind doesn't know the difference. When it says the word might, it thinks two things. It thinks possibility and strength. Okay? And it, so now it puts you into a mindset of creativity. It puts you into a mindset of possibility rather than being stuck. So that alone opens up your mind. Number two, specifically is important because general versus specific. Can you act on general things? What's easier to act on, general things or specific things? Specific. Definitely, right? When somebody tells you to, OK, um, go and make money, right? Rather than say, OK, go and follow this system, do step one, two, three, specifically, and make money, which one's easier? Which one has the higher chance of success? <laughs> the specific one, right? So knowing the difference between general um, instructions versus specific instructions makes a huge difference. A lot of people get stuck in the general. They say, well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, start a business. Yeah, that's how I'm going to make money. And then like five years down the road, they haven't done anything because they had nothing specific in their mind, <laughs> right? OK. Or I'm going to get in shape. They say, how are you going to do it? I don't know. I'm just going to do it. They have nothing specific. And then like five years later, they're still fat blob. <laughs> OK. So specific is important because you can only act on the specific, and it's a lot more um, higher chance of success. How about now? Right, because you can only change the future now. You can't change the future in the past. You can't change the future in the future. You can only change the future now. And that's from our level two um, training. So here's one simple question that gets you in step. Would you like to know what's one simple question you can always ask yourself if you're in a stuck situation that will get you out? Is this. What might I do specifically about this situation now? Notice what I did. It combines all three of the power words and doesn't have any of the stuck words, right? Because this is what happens. We get into situations where we have a problem, we don't know how to solve it. 
and then we feel frustrated, we feel overwhelmed, we feel very lacking, we feel um, stuck. And what most people do, they ask number one, why is this happening, right? Or I can't believe this is happening. They say, okay, I'm gonna try and not feel so bad, or something like that. So they use those language, and that language actually makes you more stuck. It doesn't help you, okay? So here's one question to just, just practice this. Whenever you have a, you know, any problem, any situation or any problem you need to solve, ask yourself this, what might I do to specifically about this situation now? And then now a program puts your mind into a resourceful setting, resourceful default, rather than a stuck default. Make sense?